Motion by Commissioner Daniel to approve the minutes. Second. Second by Commissioner Hammond. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the approval of the month of June. You had the bills uh, in your packet, and I think you had a few left in that uh, holder that has been passed around. Do you have any questions or discussions about the bills? Haven't there anything extraordinary about the bills? No, bad issues, no case. Okay. multi 
county funds and try to go through another uh, reformulation of that and, and they're saying that the county will get some money back. Uh, I can tell you, any way you cut it or slice it, it's not going to be anything like we used to get. And uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's pretty much gone. And you, it hurt Johnson County, it hurts us a lot because uh, anybody that had a pot of money that they were drawing from uh, in public office, that now all of a sudden finds out the money's not there for a variety of different reasons. Uh, you have to kind of to uh, find some uh, way to balance that out. You look at counties like Martin and Pine, uh, Letcher, Harlan, counties that had millions of dollars, millions of dollars of coal service come through their counties that now are looking at uh, just a minute amount of that money right now. And, and they've got uh, they, they kind of got used to having that money and they built that into their budget and they depended on that to live on and uh, it's gone. And they've got huge bond payments. They've got uh, payments for courthouses and, and other buildings that they bought. They've got payments for uh, economic development projects and, and uh, uh, senior citizen centers, uh, you know, bricks and mortar stuff that they can't pay for. And they're they're really destined. So Johnson County, you know, we're in a, in a little bit we're in a little bit better situation than they are, but mainly because we didn't have that kind of money to start. So having said that, uh, just want people to understand we've been standing here now for the last several years. We've been very fortunate since I've been in office. We uh, we have not, uh, and since this group's been in office, we've never raised taxes. We've, we've actually cut taxes on three or four occasions. And we kept saying we can't continue to do this forever. The cost of, of pension plans, the cost of fringe benefits is skyrocketing. And you just cannot keep up with the same level of revenue that we've had in the past. It just, it's just impossible. Mathematically, you can't do that. So we're gonna have to make some hard decisions ourselves and, and take a look at what we're doing. I'm proud of the fact that we, we have uh, done an awful lot already. We've cut our operating costs substantially. I've told the story before, there used to be 34 employees at the road department. I think we've got 13 right now. So that's something that we have, and, and of course everybody said you can't do it, you can't get the work done. Well, we don't get it done as quickly maybe as we did before, we get it done. And uh, we've been able to replace a lot of manpower with uh, better equipment. Snow plow, we didn't have any snow plows when I came in office. Now we've got nine that we run on the road uh, all the time for the plows and salt spray at the same time. Uh, we've got two or three people in our office, vacancies that we didn't fill, but had to tell you that. So we've done everything we can do, but we're down to a point now where we can't go much further. And uh, that's, I know it's not something is palatable right now in this day and time, but it's something we're going to look at. So having said all that, we still have an obligation under the law to uh, take care of our inmates out there and uh, try to make sure that we don't try to create any worse conditions for them than what they're used to. Feed them and clothe them and let them watch HDTV and all those good things. So, uh, and I say that sarcastically. I need a motion to approve the payment of the uh, transfer transfer of the money to the jail fund. So I have a motion. There's a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Dan. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of saying aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. is the acceptance of the sheriff's 2015 financial statement. The sheriff's financial statement shows receipts from federal grants of approximately $25,000, state grants of $8,500, state cliff programs 
$22,200. Finance and administration, one hundred and forty or $115,000. Cabinet for Human Resources, $27,500. <coughs> Sheriff Security Services, uh, $9,400. Fines and fees collected, uh, $3,100. County Clerk Delinquent Taxes, $43,000. Commission on Taxes collected, uh, $330,000. Sheriff's head on penalty, 26,000. Tax or telecommunications tax, 2,300. Auto inspections, 6,900. Uh, accident police reports, 2,200. Serving papers, 31,600. Transporting prisoners, uh, 4,900. Miscellaneous, 16,500. Interest earned, 198, $199. Fingerprints, 590. Returning fugitives, 3,280. Total revenues of uh, $688,000. Uh, <coughs> you have uh, below you the payments to the fiscal court, which shows uh, <coughs> revenue from summonses, uh, mountain comp, uh, Grant fringe benefits. Does anybody here run comp tonight? You guys, uh, is this the same program that uh, we're trying to renew with the resolution we got here? How long has been in place? Uh, um, on October will be three years. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, and three year grant. And this is a uh, just a renewal of the grant that we've got going. Yes. yes. And it uh, it benefits the JU all literally run the program, you fund it. We're the conduit, the money comes through from, from the federal government comes through us. You got to do your thing with the sheriff's office and they they hire or have you know, some people involved in it and they get paid. And then the jail also benefits from this through a series of benefits that uh, they're the inmates are eligible for when they're released, is that right? Yes, and they have all kinds of different grants and yeah. different programs. And the program that I work with is the domestic violence. Um, we do BPOs and um, we go to court with victims. And there's several other, they have an arrest grant now. Um, they have some different things to help inmates and help victims of domestic violence. Um, all sorts of different. Would you, would you know right off the top of your head how many, how many clients you have that you service uh, in a given year? Um, I think last year, I'm really not for sure on it. I know that it was probably over 100, and then a lot of it we had to make referrals, whether it was to social services or Mr. and Pot, and um, because you know we have guidelines that we have to go by in order for them to be eligible for us. So you guys, you, you kind of on the front line, you talk to these people early on, and try to make an assessment as to what the yeah. situation is for culture. We uh, we want to do everything we can do to try to help, and we're we're pleased that you all are trying to uh, uh, provide this service. I know sometimes from uh, some stories I hear, it's it's kind of difficult circumstances to see families and, and kids and people in, but uh, uh, that's just a fact of life. It's part of us growing up in this day and time, I guess. But thank you for what you do, and please tell. Uh, Julie and all the other people that's involved in this, we appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll sign off on your uh, president here just a little bit. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, the sheriff shows, I guess, 5,200 in summonses. Uh, Mount Comp is $9,071. Uh, uh, excess fee, 673 uh, two seventy seven. Or total disbursements of disbursements of six hundred eighty-eight thousand. So that zero is out. If there's no questions about the financial statement, I think most accept the uh, financial statement as presented. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Patty, this is Johnson County District budget and plan of work. Yes, someone was supposed to be here from there, but they haven't gotten here. Do you know who was coming? She didn't say, she just said Representative Bell from there. Who did you talk to? Uh, Sherry, I think, was her name. Okay, let's pass that until uh, later in the meeting. Next item uh, <clears throat> is something I'm especially pleased about, and that is back and it refers back to the management of the money of the public uh, trust in Johnson County by this court, and that is the uh, audit of the Johnson County Fiscal Court for the fiscal year ending June 30. Uh, I'm very pleased that we were able to sit in with uh, the exit conferences. Our auditors were leaving us. Uh, the auditor said that, that he does hundreds of audits from all over the area. Their company's been in business for a long time. Uh, if you go through this audit and you look at all of the findings and highlights and management's responsibility and the officer's responsibilities and opinion on regulatory basis of accounting. And all of the things that goes into to this function. And you will find out that in the end, they found no findings whatsoever. They said it was a uh, clean audit. And I believe his word that it was, it's very rare that you get a clean audit. They, they used to love to do it uh, on the uh, uh, not having actually not having enough employees and call it segregation of duties, lack of segregation of duties. Anybody that's ever been through a, uh, an audit of the public entity will see that same thing. But they said that they had nothing to uh, to find, no findings to talk about, no uh, issues to be concerned about, no financial improprieties. Not one uh, thing that they find I applaud my staff. This absolutely is a credit to uh, to Betty and Annie and Edda and, and Carla and Lil. We're kind of like a family up here. And uh, when one's busy, the other kind of steps in and does what they can do. But I do want to say publicly that everything that goes on here and the good things that everybody talks about from Franklin and the other agencies that oversee us about the finances, they all uh, credit uh, good management and good stewardship and certainly the fiscal court. They're the ones that ask all the questions. And somebody even asked me one time, so how come you guys don't uh, argue too much so you're Set up there in those meetings, you're quiet, and nobody fights and quarrels and argues. And uh, they said, uh, must not, nobody asks any questions. Well, they're, they're not there uh, all month long like I am, and they're certainly not there the week before the uh, meeting when the court picks up their packets. We try to get those out. Uh, a lot of some, some courts give it to them uh, when they walk into the meeting room, they get a copy of their. Budget, or they get a copy of their agendas, and we give our about three or four days in advance. And this court calls me. They'll call Addie. They'll call Betty. They'll call. They'll get all their questions. And any questions they might have, we get those questions answered before we come in. And that makes it a lot easier for us to sit here and go through this. But uh, I want to say thank you to the court for their good stewardship. And, and Addie, and like I said, the staff, rest of the staff in the office for everything they do. And uh, Sally Ann just did one for her here, what, a month ago, but Sally, she got the same kind of audit, so that's, that's
message kind of catching that kind of, of uh, atmosphere and decided that was a wonderful job for her staff. She handles the budget of how many million close to your office? Probably five or six, yeah, I'd say. And that's an awful lot of money to keep track of. And she's got a ton of different rabbit holes that that money goes into down in the record. But uh, thank you too, Sal, for what you do for the people of Johnson County. Having said that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the audit report for the fiscal year, June 1st, for the fiscal report. Motion by Commissioner Daniels. Second by Commissioner Adams. Any other discussion? If not, all the favor say about saying I can impose motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the Hazard Mitigation Project. Regina, is that something you want to step up for just a second and kind of touch the highlights again and what we're talking about here and why we're doing it? And I'm Regina McClure from the Big Sandy Area Development District and I assist the court with their hazard mitigation applications. You all remember when you got the generator here from the courthouse and you got one out for you. Um, an opportunity came along because they had money left over under that disaster and only Johnson County and Paintsville could apply for this money and it had to be turned around very quickly. So we went back and looked at uh, who had been interested previously and didn't get funded and we went back to the you know, W.R. Castle and uh, Red Bush Fire Department were both interested in getting generators for their facilities. And we quickly put together two applications. And these are just um, basically, you're not going through the entire process again. This is just an amendment to your closed out applications. So I just would like for you to reflect um, that you would approve submitting these applications in your minutes. And both fire departments have submitted letters to the judge that they will cover the 13% match on the project and they will also pay for all maintenance of generators in the future. So this will be of no cost to the fiscal court. This is something that uh, we've done before and it's something that I encourage uh, initiating, as we talked a little while ago about wanting to get a little tighter and tighter. Uh, these two departments are showing, I think, the community their interest trying to better serve the areas, geographical areas that they serve and the clients that they serve in their particular response area. Ledger Castle and, and Red Bush, as Regina said, there is a 13% match that uh, has to be done locally. And when we asked them if they would be interested in having a generator, a backup generator, on their property, on their, at their facility, in the event that we're responding to, and my goodness, seems like the last 10 years, Gary, it's, uh, it's common. It just it used to be a rare thing, but now every time I turn around, we've got another disaster of some sort. And uh, they stepped up. And I have a letter here from Paul Burchett uh, talking about it. That they approve, hereby approve uh, the board of directors. That they uh, the Garcassa will be responsible for the required 13% local match in reference to the generator project. It runs over the projected budget table with so many overages. <clears throat> It'll also be responsible for the cost of annual maintenance to service the generator. And they'll perform a full load test once they keep records of maintenance uh, activities and submit to the physical court. Uh, we have the same letter, uh, Red Bush Fire Department saying exactly the same thing, that they will stand responsible for the 13% local match uh, and they will assume any and all obligations to uh, to operate those and, and keep them tested annually. So do you have a copy of these or? Yes. What? Do you need these, Regina? I've got copies okay. for her. Okay. Though well, that's yours. Make sure you have them because they don't, adding the girls don't give me anything that's important if you're not losing that business. So, uh, I want to thank you, Virginia, for your work. And uh, all we need to do, I guess, is to have the court accept these uh, two letters and authorize you to press on with the, uh, the project and seeing this through fruition. So, you got a motion? Have a motion that effect from Kathy? And a second. And a second by Darren. Uh, any other discussion? You're not on the fair 
signify the same aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Gary, I appreciate uh, you and Regina and all the work you do for us. I, if you would please pass on to WR uh, Paul Burchard and, and Paul Sagard out at uh, Redbush, our sincere thank you to them for participating in this program. It shows a willingness and an interest in them trying to, to uh, help their community whenever they can, wherever they can. I need, I guess, a motion to. Uh, I, I think you did it. I do that motion already? Okay. Uh, next item. We uh, struck the work the other day and found out uh, late in the day that the elevator out here had decided just to kind of blow a gasket, I guess, and quit working. Uh, there's two ways that we can look at this. There's a valve that's uh, involved that failed, apparently. The valve, if we replace the valve only, we're probably looking at thirteen dollars or $14,000. The elevator people that, uh, that we contacted to get the, the cost estimate reminded us that this elevator system is uh, 30 or 40 years old. At this valve went bad and part of the hydraulics is probably a signal of other things to come down the road. And they said you can sit back and try to just kind of cherry pick each and every one of these things that you're going to have to do individually. And you're going to end up paying a ton of money more than what you would pay if you have an overhaul done of the whole thing. So we got a $13,000 now that we can install. Uh, or we can do the entire hydraulic uh, system, which is uh, almost all the other stuff is brand new, uh, except I don't, I don't think it includes the interior walls and things like that. That would be about 44,000 plus maybe five or 6,000 uh, for some incidental work that they would have to do once they get in there. And uh, at this time, I'm, I'm just, bring this to your attention that we're, we're looking to see if there's some way we can fund this through other funding sources rather than have to get into our general fund budget because this is a pretty substantial and it's an unexpected uh, expense that we never really thought was going to happen but it did and I would like your authorization and I think we can do that uh, uh, authorized me to confirm the, we went ahead and just filed a uh, notice of bid in the paper uh, that showed up, I guess, today or, or a couple of days ago. And uh, they we're asking for bids to come in on uh, the 16th, I think, of the next week, and uh, trying to see whether it's actually better than I can make the presentation to you guys at that time. If you'll just affirm what we've done up to now on the bid and, and then uh, authorize me to, to continue this process. So the uh, most of my call authorize me to take the necessary action to try to get some cost estimates together. Need a second, I got a second from Kathy. Any other discussion? We're done all there six by saying I uh, any opposed? Uh, next item is a resolution that we just spoke about a little while ago. Uh, the resolution says resolution of the Fiscal Court of Johnson County authorizing county judge executive to enter into an agreement with the county in partnership with its Thompson County Sheriff's Department, Mount Comprehensive Care Center, a private nonprofit community mental health agency and victim services organization operating the region's rape crisis center and sexual assault crisis center and turning point domestic violence services, the region's domestic violence shelter to execute any and all documents which are deemed necessary to facilitate grant projects in the county and to act as the authorized correspondent for such projects as a county unit of local government. And uh, as we mentioned a while ago, this is merely authorizing us to continue this program that's already in place. And I recommend uh, that we continue to, to uh, do this and ask for your recommendation and authorization for me to do this. So, motion by 
by Commissioner Campbell. Second by Commissioner Adams. Can uh, you have somebody? Do you need to pick this up as soon as you can get it? Yeah. We'll we'll need to have our clerk authorize or uh, certify this. And can you get it tomorrow? Yes, sir. Okay, that, that'll be fine. And if you would call Addie or Sally, I need the one. And, and once she gets all the certifications and everything in the book, entered into the book, will be uh, ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for what you do. Uh, emergency management, Gary, you got your uh, uh, monthly uh, activities on here. Is there anything? Uh, oh, goodness, that's right. I forgot that. Stuff together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you in just a second, Gary. Okay. <laughs> As you know, last month, I uh, mentioned it again that we had an appointment or had a vacancy at the uh, Johnson County Jail Board. We filled one vacancy last month and the month before, and we had another vacancy that has developed. Uh, one of the members uh, was taking a job, I think, in Harlan County, and he's unable to meet uh, the meeting dates here, so we wish uh, him well and like to appoint this time to the uh, board of the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center, Dr. Joe Mills. Dr. Mills is uh, a retired president of a small college in Texas. He is from uh, the area here originally, from Park County originally. Moved back here a year or so ago, and he's uh, now living in, uh, at Hager Hill. He's uh, uh, he graciously consented to, uh, to try to help him wherever he can here in Johnson County. He said he realizes he's got an obligation and uh, he knows uh, Paul and I both talked and just happened to meet him at Paul's barbershop the other day. I've been trying to catch up with him for a while and, and uh, had a chance to talk to him there and we made, we made the offer to fill this vacancy and he agreed to, uh, to serve and I think he'll be a uh, welcome addition. So at this time I'd like to recommend Dr. Joe Mills as the newest member of the China Big Center Regional Detention Center Board. And with your approval, I will contact him and tell him his appointment is approved. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Dan. Second by Commissioner Adams. Any other discussion? Here you go. Courtesy of God's name. I need to vote. Motion carries. Okay, Gary. Anything specific about the uh, your activities? Or we didn't have any. Nothing out of the ordinary, Judge, yeah. other than the last just twenty uh, the last the last snowstorm. You know, we'd ask if you could tell us what's going on. You're going to deliver this kind of snow forecast. Well, it's going to be there a while. I'm afraid to say. But well, are they still talking about a pinch or so, or one to three by probably Wednesday morning? So there's quite a bit of it out there back in West Kentucky and Indiana and Illinois, so it, well, it's headed this way. <laughs> I think most people got a little stir crazy there for a while. It, uh, that 21 inches was hard to hang for everybody. It, it was really tough. I, I know the road department, <laughs> you, it, it was tough keeping those trips yeah, in the roadway. It was. Yeah. But uh, can you imagine, Rock Island County, 3,000 vehicles on that Interstate. Yeah, I said yeah. when they shut it down. Right. And some of them were there for 10, 12, 14 hours. That's, I hope we get it. I can remember we had one back probably 20 inches or so back, I want to say in the early 90s. 93. Was it 93? And uh, Paige and I was on, went on vacation and called back. And Paige had an old concrete duck looking like a goose or something that sat outside against the fence. I thought that was an ugly thing. <laughs> and uh, we were on vacation.
days, and I called back home, and Scott was there, and I said, Scott, the, the storm hit, and he said, oh, yeah. And I said, well, how deep is it? He said, well, I don't know how deep it is. He said, I can't get out the door. But he said, tell Mom, the only thing I can see about that goose is the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty big. So, no. but, uh, but, Judge, uh, during, during the event, uh, all of the uh, volunteer fire departments, as usual, uh, stepped up. And, of course, I know I've been in contact a lot with Willard and Sam and, uh, because we had quite a few requests. Uh, it became an issue of trying to provide some transportation for dialysis patients. Uh, it became an issue of just people getting discharged from Paul B. Hall uh, and no way to get them home. And, it, I mean, it was even tough in a four-wheel driver, you know, with, with that much snow, you know, and getting off the roadway. But, you know, we uh, got through it, uh, no major accidents, uh, no major injuries or fatalities, you know, so, uh, but. Well, that's one thing that I would hope that people take away from this thing. Uh, and we say it every single time whether it's snow or whether it's trash like we had last flood or whatever, for some reason, even in the middle of, of terrible, terrible types of disasters, you got people who just want to, they just feel compelled to go to town, go to Walmart, or go somewhere. <laughs> even Chuck Walmart. The first day after the big snow, we went out, when it first started snowing, we waited until about four inches or five inches was down, and, and Sam sends the crews out. We're expecting 15, 16 inches, so he sends the crews out to knock down that first fall, and then we're going to come back the next day, we think, and get the other five or six or seven inches. Well, and we come back, and there's 21 inches total. And we send crews out trying to get uh, the roads plowed. And you'd be surprised. People that live above the road or live below the road and decide, well, I can't take the car if I take it down to the mouse, or up on a hill, then I can get out. So they park right in the middle of the road, and then we can get snow plows through. At one time, the first day of our response to the snow, we had six snow plows in the ditch at the same time. It cost us several thousand dollars over a period of two days, just in record books. And I would like to encourage people, please, please, please. You know, we're trying to get there as soon as we can, and our major obligation is to open the road for traffic. Just get people away in and out in case you have an emergency, in case you have a, uh, an illness or, or a fire or something. So our obligation is to get that road open. And these people don't think about that. They think, well, you know, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't move because if I put it in there, I couldn't get it out. So they have to understand in the big picture, you know, we're going to have to revisit our emergency plan, I think, and maybe, and I, I, I talked about this a little bit, if we have to, we may have to put something in there about uh, uh, push guns to shove, and we may just start towing vehicles, because we can't just shut down operation because somebody's going to park in the middle of the road or beside the road, and nobody can get by. So uh, that's not being really thoughtful to his neighbors anyway. But... Uh, that's just something that we like to deal with down the road. Try to keep down the snowfall the rest of the year to the end. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, anything else that, suppose that we need to bring before the court this time for the good of the If not, uh, I guess we'll